What is up you guys? So by the title of this video, you can already tell that I'm actually going to show you how I shave my face. No, this is not clickbait. I actually shave my face. So there's a few reasons I do that. One, because I get really self-conscious of... Conscience? Cautious? Really self-conscious? Conscious? I don't fucking know. I get really self-cautious of the peach fuzz that, that grows on my face. Um, also, my upper hair lip area. Two, I like a smooth surface for putting on my makeup. And three, I think it makes my skin look so glowy. Also, I'm really sorry if the lighting gets weird in here. I'm sitting right in front of a window and so... You know, the natural sun, the sun's moving with the clouds, the natural sun. Like, there's an artificial sun. So yeah, if the lighting gets weird, it's just the sun and the clouds moving around out there. Not only am I going to talk to you today about shaving my face, but also cleaning up my eyebrows. Not really doing anything crazy to them. Not really reshaping them or going too wild, but just giving them a cleaner look. So, a little bit of backstory. For years, for probably two years, I would get my brows and my upper lip waxed. The girl that was doing my waxing actually moved to a different state, and so I did some at-home waxing. It was just kind of a hot mess for me. Um, there were a couple times that I burnt myself, and I think I had the last straw the one time that I actually spilled the wax all over my counter, and it was just a pain in the ass to get off, and I was like, man, if this is really hard to get off, and this is really bad for my skin, like I'm burning myself, and my skin's getting irritated, maybe I should just completely stay away from waxing. So I did a little bit of research and decided to do threading, and I did threading for a really long time. And here's the thing, I didn't get sick of threading at all, and I have a high pain tolerance, so for me, threading didn't really hurt. I mean, it kind of hurt with like in this area with these thin hairs or like right around here but I just got lazy and quit going to get my brows threaded and there was nothing wrong with it I highly suggest getting threaded if you can handle a little bit of pain or at least trying it out um or if you want to stick with waxing do you but I like I said I just didn't like the idea of using those chemicals on my face anymore when I first was getting waxing by the same girl I did have her do my face a few times and both times, I think we only did it twice, both times my face broke out in heat rash and I was like, we are not doing this anymore. So yeah, I before even doing any kind of waxing, um, I would tweeze my eyebrows, which was a terrible decision because I think I started tweezing my eyebrows when I was like 15 or 16 and my eyebrows got so thin and that was kind of the trend then, but I'm glad and very lucky that they actually grew back. And then I would use Nair hair removal Nair, I cannot talk today. Nair hair removal on my upper lip and every single time my upper lip got super puffy and the skin got red and very, very irritated. So I tried Nair, I tried waxing, I tried threading. When I did threading though, they didn't do the sides of my face so I still had that peach fuzz that I didn't like. So I actually did dermaplaning as well. Um, I haven't done dermaplaning for like the last three months. I think I did it for about nine months. And the reason for and the reason that I stopped doing dermaplaning was because I had noticed around the same time that my forehead, my face as well, but my forehead had started breaking out really, really bad. And I'm 23. I know that there's an adult, a thing called adult acne, but I noticed that's when my face started getting really, really bad is around the same time that I started doing dermaplaning. It was bad before, but I feel like the dermaplaning was actually just causing it to be worse. So I literally just quit doing the dermaplaning and I haven't done it for the last three months and I feel like my face, like obviously I have three pimples right in here and I have a couple of big ones on my forehead, but my forehead used to be covered in giant red irritated bumps and my cheeks used to be covered in little itty bitty bumps. But there are a couple things that I feel like we need to talk about real quick before I get into actually just showing you how I shave my face. So the first thing is, is obviously you don't want to have any kind of makeup on. The second thing that I like to do that you don't have to do, but I like to do is exfoliate my face just to make sure that any leftover makeup, gunk, sweat, anything is getting cleaned off your face so that way when we're shaving your face um there's not gonna be gunk on your face that your pores are going to be exposed to and then the third thing i like to do is again just one more thing to make sure all that gunk is off your face is to use a toner just to cleanse the face so i actually use these itty bitty razors and they usually come with a lid but after i use them once i throw away the lid and they look like this so these ones I get from salon brands. I get four of them and I think it's like $10. Um, you can buy some on Amazon. You get like three of them for like seven bucks and you can get some at Target that are very, very similar to the ones that you can get off Amazon. And the only difference is, is these ones are a little bit larger than the other ones. I like these ones better personally. Um, I will try to remember to link just a handful of them or as many as I can find, I guess, down below in the description box. And another thing that I forgot to mention is I have been doing this now for probably two years and if not three years and i have never had a problem with any of the hairs growing back thicker never i don't know what it is i don't know how it works because i shave my entire body my arms my legs my armpits everything and pretty much everything else grows back thicker but my facial hair has never i've never had a problem with it growing back thicker so if that's something you're scared of again you don't have to do this this is just something i like to do for you know to get rid of that peach fuzz and just have a very smooth surface for my skin 
Okay, so for me, I like to start at the forehead, and the forehead isn't, there's not a lot of fuzz around there, so I don't focus too much on it, but I do still want to eliminate those hairs. So what I usually do is I'll do one side of my face, and then I'll go over and do the other side of the face. Make sure that you do not hit your eyebrows because that would be a disaster. And I like to focus right here because there's all these thin hairs that are really, really hard for me to tweeze out. So now that I've kind of done that, I'm going to get closer to my eyebrows and just kind of get rid of those hairs that I don't want in the shape of my brow. Okay, we're going to come down here. And we're going to go with the way the hair is growing, basically. So I'm going downward, as you can see. I also forgot to mention, this is not as good as dermaplaning. I wouldn't necessarily replace the dermaplaning with this, but it will help do kind of the same idea as dermaplaning. Like, I just peeled off some dead skin. That's kind of what dermaplaning does as well. Dermaplaning just gets a lot deeper and eliminates a lot more build up and hair and whatnot on your face. I feel like if you have the money, you should try dermaplaning. Or if you like getting facials, just try dermaplaning at least once. Because I love it. I just feel like it was not working out for my skin. Again, just take your time doing this. Be very, very careful. You don't want to nick yourself. When you do, it hurts a bit. It will go away in like two to three days because, I mean, every time I've done it, it's not a deep cut. But it does look like a cat scratched your face, and it's not cute. Okay, so I'm going to show you one little trick real quick, and then I'm going to do the other side of my face off camera. So when I do this kind of chin area, what I like to do is basically give myself a double chin because I'm less likely to cut my jawline. So kind of make this ugly face and just go for it. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you kind of how I do this. I'm going to be really careful. Just kind of clean up that area. Okay, so now where I'm going to go off camera and I'm just going to do the other side of the face. But before I do that, can you tell that there's a difference? Because I feel like I can tell that this side looks glowier and smoother as opposed to this side. I don't know, maybe I'm just biased. Maybe that's me. Okay, so now I have done both sides of my face. And I could be being biased, but I feel like my skin's already glowing and looks so much better. So literally that took maybe... 10 minutes of my time. One thing that I did forget to mention is kind of how often I do this. So I would say that I do this probably like every two weeks, if not three weeks. I don't necessarily keep on a regular schedule. You can just wing it if you want or look at your face and be like, mm, it's time to do this. So like I said, a lot of the time that's kind of how it is, but I also look at the same time. At the same time, I'll look at the day and I'm like, oh yeah, my face is due for a nice good shaving. Okay, so literally our face is looking glowy and less hairless and it looks smoother. There are a few more steps. First of all, I'm going to show you my brows and then I'm going to show you kind of like how I relieve and moisturize my face. So as far as my brows, like I told you guys, I don't actually mess with the shape of them. I literally just do this to keep my brows looking very clean up at home. So I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. I might just show you how I do one of them. They honestly look pretty damn good already. So I have this should have zoomed out. I have this brow kit that I have, obviously, and um, this you can pick up at Ulta for like $10. I think it comes with, if not one, two bristles, and then a pair of tweezers. If not, I'm sure you can find something just like it at Target or Amazon. So when I used to get my brows waxed, she told me that the beginning of your brow is always the hairs naturally grow up as opposed to the tail of the brow the hairs naturally grow down my brows actually look pretty damn good from the last time i did them so if you do not trust yourself to do this i recommend finding somebody you trust or just not doing this and going getting your brows professionally done
Sorry, I just kind of cut the camera off. <laughs> okay, it looks better. I feel like that looks really really good okay so now we're gonna do the other brow I'm actually gonna go ahead and do this off camera okay so I just kind of trimmed and cleaned up my eyebrows and now I'm gonna go in with my tweezers um this is the brand tweezer man I think you get these at Ulta they are a little pricey but they are probably the sturdiest best like most precise tweezers i've ever purchased i know that sounds crazy but i have a really cheap tweezers that i bought from like target and they just don't work as well they're like my backup tweezers okay so now what i do is i just go in i'm gonna try to zoom in as much as i can you can tweeze out whatever hairs you want and get as precise as you want but i'm just gonna focus on these very very thick hairs that won't be very easy to cover up with concealer hope that one looks better and like I said I'm not here to reshape my brows I'm just keeping the shape that they've had so I have two more steps that I want to share with you guys to just complete this look and to take care of our skin okay so the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an ice cube I know this sounds silly but we're gonna take it all over our entire face and my idea behind this is kind of just like getting a facial to seal up those pores so that way your skin doesn't break out but also to cool your face to keep your face from breaking out it's very easy really cold just go over like I said your entire face wherever we shaved or you shaved I should say now I would suggest doing this in your bathroom over the sink so it doesn't drip water all over your carpet like I'm doing right now but then what I do is I actually don't take a towel I take a paper towel because a lot of buildup and bacteria and gunk can collect in regular towels you could take I guess a freshly cleaned um washcloth which I should probably do because I have a lot of washcloths and I'm environmentally friendly but I just grabbed a paper towel and I'm not going to wipe my skin dry I'm literally just going to tap my skin dry so just tap your skin dry also this is good because it'll help pick up any of the loose little hairs on your face the last thing that I do is just to, again, take care of your skin. I'm going to go over my face with a moisturizer. Now you can use whatever moisturizers you want. I'm just going to show you the top two moisturizers that I've been using for probably like two years now. So there is this um, Neutrogena oil-free moisturizer. This is for combination skin. I think they have one for oily skin and maybe dry skin. Um, this is super affordable. Target makes their own brand of this, which is basically a knockoff but it's the same thing and you save like two dollars if you buy that i bought the neutrogena brand and the target brand and then i also have this shea moisture which you can also pick up at target um this is 100 percent virgin coconut oil daily hydration overnight face oil with coconut milk and asasi senegal soften restore skin i have no idea what the heck half those words were this is what it looks like so it does say use at night, but if you read the back of the fine print, it says you can use any time of the day. I think they tell you to use at night because it is an oil product. So when you put it on your face, it does make your skin look very, very oily. Just take a little bit of this. Like I said, you can use whatever moisturizer you want. If you want to use the Neutrogena one, that's fine. But my skin is so dry because it's like 30 degrees outside. Just rub this in and I don't completely rub it in. I just try to make sure that there's not blobs of oil sitting on my face because that tends to happen. Okay, you guys, that is pretty much all that I have for you today. That is how I shave my face and how I clean up my brows. Like I said, this is not something you have to do. I just like to do it to eliminate some of the peach fuzz and to give my face a smoother feel, um, more of a blank, smoother canvas for doing my makeup. It does make my face look brighter. Oh my God, as you can see, I did nick my face a little bit with a razor don't know how like I said it looks like a kitty scratch it doesn't burn and it's gonna be easy to cover up with makeup but it's kind of embarrassing I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful if you have any questions please leave them if you have any questions please leave them below in the comments and I will reply to them um, I'm not that busy and nobody ever comments on my videos anyway so I appreciate you for taking the time to watch this please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you found this video useful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one